Hello and welcome back to the stream. So this is the second stream that we're doing on this Twitch channel. Uh, this time around, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different from the last. So instead of just me being on the screen, I actually have my buddy Corbin Crutchley over here, who's going to be doing most of the heavy lifting on this particular episode. Uh, so just, just some logistical stuff out of the way. Uh, we are live. So if you want, please engage with us in the chat. Let me go ahead and uh, send out a test message and make sure that it, it shows. It looks like it does, which is perfect. Uh, ask us questions. We're happy to help. Uh, this, this particular episode, I'll let Corbin talk about what, uh, what exactly he's going over. Uh, but let's, let's make it fun and interactive. Um, so over to you, Corbin. Let's, let's see what we can accomplish today. Yeah, for sure. So uh, today I'm going to be kind of introducing React, what it is, how to use it, some of the tools around React, and we're going to try to get a basic website up and running with React. Um, thanks for having me on, and I hope that we're going to have a good time interacting with the so, chat and such. Uh, what, uh, I know that you have some plugs to share, right, Corbin? What, uh, what, what do you do? What are your hobbies, man? Yeah, so I run a website called Unicorn Utterances. Um, if you Google, it should be the first result. And what we do is we are a computer programming, well, not just programming, but really any computer science educational uh, website. So it's it's entirely free and uh, not dissimilar from Polyglot Developer. Uh, we try to write articles that we think would be found useful. Uh, I just released a post about how networking works on a very high level. We're going to do a series on that. And then uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be doing a live stream on my Twitch channel, which um, I'm Crutchcorn on Twitch, and we're going to be live streaming how to build an application with React Native and some of the fun stuff I've been able to do with React Native over the past few weeks. Perfect. All right, I'm just sharing uh, the links that you mentioned in the chat in case people awesome. want to visit this uh, either now or on demand when it's on YouTube. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, I think the topic of this episode is going to be around uh, getting started with React, right? So get people through the door what they yep. what they need um, to make it a little less uh, terrifying, right? For sure, for sure. So I'm going to pull up uh, the React docs really quickly, just so that I can have something showing more than just my lovely background while I talk yeah, about right it. Yeah, right now we just bit. see your background. Right, right. So I figured I'll sh I'll show something a bit more there interesting on it. Um, zoom in just so that way we can. Um, yeah, people like me who have that. old eyes and can't see. Uh, there we go. I have an ergonomic keyboard, so every now and then figuring out how to zoom in is a bit weird because I have to use oh, two yeah, thumbs for it. Yeah, just always so, keep, always keep it at about one hundred fifty percent for the zoom. I think we're good at that. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna use that example. I'll just talk over it. So, what React allows you to do with web uh, engineering is that you can have a very, very piecemeal organization to your uh, code that allows you to kind of mix and match different components um, for reuse, for simpler engineering, and well, I shouldn't say simpler uh, because it does add a bit of complexity, a bit of, a bit of mental overhead, but it helps with large-scale applications in particular. Uh, it is able to live display data from your JavaScript into your UI. So let's say that you have a counting application. You want to have a timer on screen that updates. Well, in React, what you would do is you would set a timer in JavaScript, increment your state by one, and it would render on screen without you having to say, go render this like you would have to with jQuery or even vanilla JavaScript. So React is a really, really powerful tool that allows you to have very, very small pieces of code that you reuse multiple times throughout your application. And then that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just uh, just want to throw something out there since I'm messing around with settings on our stream as Corbin is talking. Um, I did lower his volume a little bit. I think he was clipping a little bit. That's an apology on my part. Uh, also, uh, still getting used to the streaming. Uh, this is the first co-op stream that we've done. So uh, expect, expect some minor uh, glitches uh, as, as we improve. Um, but yeah, sorry to interrupt, Corbin. No worries. No worries. It's, it's a good disclaimer. 
So a small example of a React component would be something like this. So uh, React DOM dot render says go print this on screen, and then it will automatically update every time after that. Uh, and then we have components. So this is a hello message component uh, that you then render as if it was an HTML tag directly in your JavaScript. And you can pass in properties. Uh, you can have states, so you can update the seconds that have passed, as I mentioned. So here's a great example. We have an update to the state. Can you zoom in once? And when... Sorry. Yep. Sorry about that. Ah, it's 150. Okay. thought it was already. So... Here we have uh, the state, which is starting at zero. Every time that tick method is run, it adds one to the seconds. And then we just have a set interval when this component renders on screen that says for every second, run a tick and it will add one and it will render every time. Uh, and this is like maybe 10, 12, well, I'm not sure exactly how many lines of code just offhand, but maybe 20 lines of code at very max. And it's already able to do something that would be at least more frustrating to do in something like jQuery or vanilla JavaScript. So you can really, really go ham and, and have some very powerful tools at your disposal. Sweet. Yeah. So I'm going to set us up with something called Create React App. Um, what this does, if you're familiar with like Webpack or Babel or some of those tools, Create React App is a wrapper around those utilities to make it significantly more easy. Um, if you've ever had to set up a Webpack config yourself, you know how much of a pain in the butt it is to kind of go into configuration and edit this file and then- It's oh, the worst. No, I made a typo. It's, it's t I've been doing it for a super long time and every time I have to edit Webpack config manually, I'm like, no, please, no. <laughs> Um, it's gotten better, but it's still not fun. So Create React App makes it as easy as running. Once you have Node installed, npx create react. And I'm, I'm typing out some of these I commands inside of the chat as well. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So if we do Create React App demo app, um, it's going to start installing the required packages. Can you zoom in on your terminal a bit? Yeah, it's let's like see if... uh, a million sizes too small, I think. How's uh, that? Let's do maybe three more. That? Yeah, that that looks doable. I can see it. Um, it may it may be small okay. for some people, but you know what? I'm my eyes are pretty bad, so I'm, I'm might be a decent baseline. <laughs> okay. It's it. I have like an ultra-wide screen, so on my screen, it's oh, like yeah, yeah. absolutely massive. Every, every letter is an inch yeah, that's that's how it tall. Goes. But I, t I, I know how it goes with streaming. It, it's never like quite yeah. aligned up. So by default, we have some commands that are in here. Um, so let's take a look. So if we go into demo sure. app, we can see that we have a source file. We have our package JSON. If we, um, I'm running bat, which is just like a an extension to cat. So it just prints out the file in a pretty way on the is terminal. Is that baked into Mac, or is that something you downloaded? It's it's something I downloaded. I have all sorts of terminal utilities because all the built-in terminal utilities can. Can you get my, that with Brew, or my... do you have to download that so... elsewhere? Yeah, all no, right. it's on Brew. So and and all it does is it adds some line numbers off to the side and lets you scroll <laughs> up and down. So in this example, we have some dependencies. So we have testing library, which makes uh, writing component tests much easier. Um, so if you want to do test-driven development, super trivial to do once you understand uh, the bases here. We have our start command, which will run a developmental version and then allow us to access a live refreshing version of that app. Uh, and then we have the build command. Uh, which will generate the HTML and CSS and all that good stuff to host on a CDN. So you can host it with Zeet now. You can host it manually with something like um, DigitalOcean. You can host it however you want. Perfect. So we also have test, which just runs uh, the Jest tests, stuff like that. Um, by default, if we look under SRC, you can see that they're JavaScript files. If we wanted to, we could add TypeScript into the fray. Um, they have some configurations. Uh, is it here? Is TypeScript the recommended approach for React, or is it JavaScript? 
I don't think that there is the, the the React core team has done a very very good job at staying fairly yeah. agnostic to most of uh, the preferences. However, they've made it very very easy to select TypeScript or Flow. So, for example, yeah. here we go. If you want to add TypeScript, you can just use the TypeScript use template. If you want to add Flow, oh, sorry, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I forget that my screen is yeah. not. One of these days, I'll nope, figure it out. Nope, we're, we're all learning when <laughs> uh, it comes to but, streaming. It happens to me too. Yeah. So um, you can use the TypeScript template, which is just adding in one extra command here. I'll zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so that will generate a TypeScript command. Uh, you can even add in TypeScript to an existing project. And it's just as easy as installing the uh, dependencies. And that's it. There's very little config that you have to add. Same thing with flow typed, if you prefer flow typed. Um, there's all sorts of utilities that you can add in very, very trivially. Now, in regards to TypeScript and React, um, if I were to, if I were to choose mm -hmm. TypeScript, which I've I've used it, it's nice. Am I going to find an equal amount of mm -hmm. official React tutorials to help me get started, or um, am I going to struggle? I have found that TypeScript has good enough community support that you will find um, answers for a lot of the questions you have. You know, so. How do I type a React uh, functional component, which is something you'll get into later on in, in uh, React development? You can find answers for those types of things on uh, uh, Stack Overflow, no problem. I've not yet run into a problem with React and TypeScript that I've just been like, man, there, there's there's no answers. I don't know where to turn. I, you know, Everything that's within TypeScript uh, pertaining to React usage is fairly well documented. Perfect. So I'd say it's a fairly safe bet. Um, also, I'm going to add a tiny plug here. Sure, um, go for it. If you go to the website um, and you're not maybe familiar with some of TypeScript usages, um, I have a post that outlines and explains where is it. And this is your blog, Unicorn at Earths, is right. Yep. 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 Added the added the link to the chat earlier. I'll add it again uh, as we progress through the stream, so that way it refreshes in people's minds. Yeah. So uh, there's a post that we have that is an introduction to TypeScript. So it explains yeah. what TypeScript is, how it can be useful, all sorts of good stuff. Um, so if you're maybe not familiar with what we're talking about with TypeScript, we have a uh, post Perfect. here for you. So uh, now that we have an example application, let's see what we get out of the box. So let's do npm run start, remembering that we have that start command built right in with React scripts. We should be able to bring up a server here soon. Are you awesome. using a special terminal? Uh, I'm using iTerm. iTerm. Right. I I have a I have all sorts of crazy <laughs> configs. So like this bottom yeah. bar is is a special config, and then I set it up so that I'm using a, a special theme, and sure. I have a little emoji here. So <laughs> it's not too hard to set up, but it's it's wonky. I just yeah, like no it. problem. So. But keep in mind, you don't have to have any special terminal configs or anything like that to get. Well, there. actually, uh, so yeah. So I mean, a that. common question I get even on my own YouTube videos is, what am I using for my terminal, or what am I using as my IDE, or what plugins am I using? Yeah. Uh, because you know, people are new to this. They don't. Uh, you don't know everything right away, and it, it doesn't hurt to ask, and you learn a lot. Well, and I think one of the problems that, and this isn't specific to programming. I noticed this for like every industry that has like this this wide range of expertise yep. to it, is that you see people that you you look up to or that you think, wow, they they know what they're doing, and you want those tools yeah. immediately, right? Like your first instinct is, well, that's what they use. Very clearly, I should yeah. be using it. And usually, what I tell people is, yep. hold off wait until you have a much better understanding of what's going on at the core, what the core technologies are, how to use them, and then start to understand the tooling. Because especially with something like JavaScript, the tooling can be just as complicated, if not more so, than the uh, than the the language itself. So great examples like Webpack. We were just complaining about yeah. Webpack and how frustrating it can be to utilize. And uh, Create React app works perfectly fine for 99.9 .9 use cases yep. I've ran into. 
And yeah, there are going to be instances where you need to eject and use Webpack yourself and all that stuff. But if you're able to just use the utilities that are, are simpler and free and, and available, um, it'll help you in the long term. Um, speaking of such, uh, one of the utilities I'm going to be using today for my code editor is called WebStorm. Um, it is a paid sure. IDE, so it, it does cost a fair bit of amount of money, but there is no difference between this and, and Visual Studio Code. They look relatively similar, um, and, and the functionalities are, are very, very, very similar. It's just a now, it being paid. Is it a is it a subscription or is it a one time fee? It it's a got subscription. It. Um, I, they might have a one time fee, but it's it's somewhat ah, exorbitant. Got it. Um, if I and I'm sure there's probably reasons why you prefer this over over others. Um, but I mean, we don't have to get into that here. I, there are reasons, but what I'll say is that even though I do pay for and use WebStorm, there's many, many projects that I just default to using VS Code yeah. to. Uh, um, so there's nothing wrong with VS Code. I use Sublime Text sometimes. I know friends who still use Atom despite being professional <laughs> developers. Um, so it's hey, just a matter I, of preference. I just recently tools. switched from Atom, so <laughs> cut me some slack. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, 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 I say like... Yeah. Despite being professional, just because some people think that you can't do this type of work with free yeah. tools, and you absolutely this time, la this time last just... year, I think I was still using Atom. Yeah, and, and I, I, uh, I couldn't get into Atom for very like yeah. weird niche reasons, but I respect yeah. like the the power that it had. So um, I'm gonna move this off to half the screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, we don't see there. it at all, right? Oh, we see a little bit. All right, there you go. Got it. No, yeah, so I was saying that I was going to move this part off to yeah. the side of the screen. Um, and then uh, definitely need to increase so that font. we have edit source. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there we go. Oh, that, that? Looks, that looks lovely. Um, you're, you're not oh, able, are you able to zoom in on the, um, the, font, the Explorer as well, or is, um, does that not zoom? That's fine. No. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff. Well, you know what? I might just use Visual it's, Studio. It's Code. fine. I mean, you could just tell us a story on whenever you click uh, on something, and and we'll we'll get the idea. It's all right. Let's try this. So I know this one does scale a lot better, admittedly. Uh, polyglot demo. Boop. Yeah, I use I use um, Visual Studio Code specifically <laughs> because it's better for videos because I can zoom in on the entire editor rather than just the the code portion. Yeah. I often forget. I forget about that, admittedly. So. All right. So let me put in the chat that you've changed editors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm keeping you on your toes. <laughs> All right. So uh, in the localhost 3000 instance that we're running from our uh, terminal, you can see that we have this little React logo spinning around, being yep. all happy. Uh, and then we have a message saying edit source .javascript. So this is where that, that code come in, comes into play. We have uh, a CSS file. Excuse me. We have a CSS file and a JavaScript file for yep. app. So if we look at what they're doing in the app.js file, we're importing an SVG, logo.svg, which is what this is. We're importing app.css, which uh, gives us some classes that we can utilize, all sorts of good stuff. And then we have a function that returns something that looks a lot like yeah. HTML. Uh, this HTML-like syntax is called JSX, which is uh, supported by default with the um, Create React app. It'll transform this into uh, functions and some other good stuff that your browser can understand. Um, but JSX is not built into the browser, so it's it's build tools allow us uh, build tools in create react app allow us to display things on screen so we have a div with the class name app so app is right here so we're centering the text in that class uh, app header we are applying the background color and the minimum height and all that other stuff and then we have our logo which is app logo which has an animation of spinning for infinitely every 20 seconds uh, and then we have our code. So we could actually edit this, and we could say instead of edit app.js, we could say hello world, hit save, and then this should automatically refresh with our changes. 
which is super nice. Being able to just have our changes made automatically live is a huge speed up yeah. to development. It, it, it's fa it's fabulous. I don't even I don't even know if you were oh, alive yeah. when uh, when this wasn't uh, a thing, but it was a struggle. I, struggle was real. I I I, I did <laughs> utilize a lot of uh, ES3. <laughs> Oh, those were the days. Good old ES3. Yep. So uh, one of the nice parts about React is that we can have a separation between uh, a lot of our logic. So let's say that we wanted to make this logo its own piece of code. Yep. So what we could do is we could uh, create a new folder. Let's call it something like logo display. And we'll create a new file. We'll do logo display.css. And we'll do logo display .js. So here we will. I'm going to make this full screen for a second. Sure. And I'm going to yoink some of this code. So we always need an import React from React. Uh, we do want to import from logo.svg, but we need to move up one path because I'm now in this folder. So we need to move up one to import the logo. We can remove all of that because we only care about the image rendering uh, when something from JSX shows on screen or when one of these components in this case we'll call this one logo display um, when this shows on screen we call it yeah. rendering um, which is just a bit of terminology to keep in mind so now we're importing logo display.css which is empty we're going to copy that uh, CSS. And you don't need to have any CSS so at all. Right? Um, you could just not have CSS. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying yeah, to showcase definitely. really quickly how you would utilize yep. CSS. Um, so notice that we don't have the app logo CSS here anymore. We're now importing it into logo display here. So now what I could do is in our app.js, we could do import logo display from logo display forward slash logo display. And now instead of that IMG, we could just have logo display. So now if I save that, I reload. Um, let me double check that that actually worked. I'm pretty sure it did. But what we can do to be certain is that if you install in the web store the React uh, dev tools. It's in the Chrome store. It's in uh, Firefox, available for the new Edge, all sorts of good stuff. Um, but the dev tools provide us the ability to look at what the names of the components really? are. So you can see that logo. To, yeah. So if you have a huge application with a ton of different components and each one of these items was their own yeah. components, we can actually see the name of that component that itself. Is so great. in this case, sorry. Good. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, they've really they they just released a I think it's version four don't quote me on that number uh, but I think they just released a new version of the React Dev Tools and they're phenomenal simply amazing they worked really really hard to make a new version of it and it works with all the new uh, React goodies if you've used React hooks it works with yeah, those I, as well I mean now. I just started learning React I come from Angular and Vue I didn't even know this extension existed but I, it would have made my life a lot easier. <laughs> Well, especially because if you look under your HTML, yeah. there's no indication that this is a yeah. component, right? Like, this is just an image tag. And and in Angular or Vue, you would have that representation of, like, the logo-display. Yeah. Like, you would see that yeah, in your uh, elements. So being able to go into your components and uh, see exactly what you have uh, rendering is super So super what super was super. the name of the, the extension again so I could add it to the chat? That was the React Developer Tools extension. Got it. Yeah, I'm adding all this stuff in the chat so, because you know what? You don't catch it live. Uh, at least it'll show up in the video itself for on-demand content. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, now that we have that, we can do a few interesting things. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is I actually want to uh, change what do we want to do? That's an SVG. Let's see if we can color this SVG a different color. So we could do, oh, it's an image, so we can't. All right, that's fine. 
So what we can do is we can create a new component. You could call it something like uh, display message. And we will have display message.js and display message.css. So instead of printing out a hello world, we're going to have some custom logic. So we're going to import React again. Because every time you use JSX, you need to have uh, React imported at the very top sure. of the file. Uh, otherwise, it won't do a lot of the transformations that are expected. So even though we aren't using React, we do need to have it imported. Uh, we'll also do import display message dot CSS. You can type and tell people are watching. Definitely watching. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying is that like once people start watching, man, all the hand, all the gloves are off in terms of uh, communication. It's all good. Well, it's not. Well, you do right that. Here. I'm just gonna put out some plugs for the channel. Um, yeah. So um, again, uh, if you want to follow. Uh, Corbin and Unicorn Utterances. Let me get that typed in there. I should have set up the bot to do this for me, but I, I didn't do it. I forgot. So that is Unicorn Utterances. Or if you want, you could also visit the Polyglot Developer website, which I will add as well. Just throwing out every random plug right now. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, maybe you're tuning in late. Um, you can catch this on demand to catch up where you missed out. Um, I, it shouldn't stop you from 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 continuing to watch this, but uh, on YouTube, uh, that is where you'll be able to find it eventually. Not, I'm not saying it'll be ready immediately after this stream, but at some point in time, it'll be up there. All right. So. Turns out I was writing JavaScript in a CSS oh. file. Oh yeah, I didn't even know <laughs> So I had to move that over back to the <laughs> JavaScript file. Um, but something I forgot to have mentioned, uh, we notice how instead of yeah. class, we're using class name, which is kind of interesting if you're familiar with HTML. The reason for this is that JSX uses the property names that are on the element. Um, so I'll give you a great example. If we look at this image tag um, in JavaScript, if I do, uh, or in Chrome, if I do dollar sign zero, zoom in? it gives me a reference. Yeah. Uh, please. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So if I do dollar sign zero, it will give me a reference to this yep. image tag. I could also do document dot query selector, and I could do image, and that would give me the reference to the element as well, yep. right? So if I do Something like const imgl equals that. And I look at um, class. You can see that class name actually comes sure. up. And that's because if you look at the NDM docs for element, you can see that this is what JavaScript gives us. So we have class name, we have class list. We have all the elements or the attributes that are on the element property itself. So instead of the uh, attribute class, yeah. we use the property name class name. So just as a reference, some of them aren't quite the same. Some of them are very, very, very similar. Um, so there's a few different docu a few different ways to add attributes that you just might have to look up that are different. So in this case, I'm making the class display message show color of red with a fairly large font size. So we have this component. Now we can render it. Notice that I need to import it now. Uh, we're no longer using the logo import, so I'll take that over. And I will do display message forward slash display message. Is there any uh, Visual Studio um, code com uh, plugins that will automatically import based on the components that you try to add? Does such a thing exist? You, you can. I've had somewhat spotty. Th this is one of the reasons why I use WebStorms yeah. is that I've had some spotty behavior with the auto Got imports. Um, 
So you can. I just have not had very good luck with it personally. Got it. So I, I tend to type things out. So you'll notice that the text is now much larger and yep. it's red. But what if we didn't want hello world? And what if what if we wanted the ability to pass in multiple of these? So I want to have one that says hello world. Uh, I want to have one that says this is a test. Um, I want to have a few of them because I can reuse that code multiple times. But I don't want them to display the same things. What I can do is I can pass in a property. So I could do a display message and we'll default that to hello world. And now to render that, I'm gonna put in braces yeah. here. Please format properly. I didn't, all right. Uh, and these braces are going to allow us to render in whatever JavaScript value is passed in. So for example, if I pass in display message, this is a test that will yeah. render, right? But we can also go a little bit further and we can do display message and then pass in curly braces here to pass in a JavaScript value. So we could do an object of test one and that will also render, although it's not gonna like, well, okay, that's not gonna like that very much because it's not meant to be an object. So what we had, what we'd have to do is we'd have to do two string. Okay. So what that's doing here is that we're passing in a raw object yes. here, and that object is being sent to string, which is a little bit confusing. But what we could do is, let's say we wanted to have display message, and display message should have uh, a message property. Yeah. So actually, this this brings up something. So. If yeah. we were using TypeScript and we and we defined display message as a string, would we still have this problem? No, All right. it, it would mess that uh, the typings are not correct. Um, the oh, TypeScript, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't automatically uh, assume that it's now a string instead of an object. Um, so so let's say that I, I had it like this um, in yes. TypeScript, I'd have to type this uh, property. So I do display message yeah. string, right? Yeah. If I try to pass in an object like I'm doing here, it would yeah. actually underline this and throw a compiler error and say, hey, you're, you're using the incorrect type here. Got it. Um, Just thought I'd ask. Excuse me. No, no, great question. In this case, let's say that we want to have uh, display object, which is probably a much better name. Object should have a yeah. message field. So we actually have a and comment say, coming in here too. So sorry to interrupt. Um, so mm -hmm. it's app IC um, said that the extension I think that we were referring to is simple react snippets for VS code. Is that what you were using? Uh, simple react snippets, I think might be a little bit different. They're right. probably, I'm just double checking. Yeah. So what they are is it's a way to ha type in a very, very small amount of things. So if you type in IMR and hit enter, it will do import react from react. Got it. So. I like this type of thing, but I tend not to do it in uh, videos or, or live streams just because I think it adds a bit of complexity. Yeah. And I'm also really bad at memorizing things. Um, whenever <laughs> yeah, I'm too. switching languages or frameworks, I always have to Google. Great example. I wrote Python for like two, three years professionally. Yeah. And this week I went back and wrote some Python and I no joke had to Google how to do an if statement in Python. Yeah. Not because I don't know what an if statement is, not because of anything like that, but just I, I plain and simply did not understand what the syntax was anymore. So I'm, I'm really yeah. bad at memorizing this type of stuff. Thanks for the follow. It's epic. Yeah. But great recommendation. And if you are able to use stuff like this, then super more power to you. <laughs> Oh no, what happened? That's because our code we just broke finished. everything. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Darn it all. <laughs> uh, so display object dot message. Actually, why is that throwing an error? For anyone who's Probably watching, this message. is your opportunity to ask Corbin questions. This is a this is a live stream. Yes. Um, yes, it is. Don't don't be afraid. Uh, doesn't matter what what uh, what level you ask. Um, even tell me that my typos are terrible. You could do that, but I mean, <laughs> let's keep it positive. But uh, I, know, it's, I know it's a it's a learning opportunity for everyone, not just uh, listeners, yeah. but even us on the stream. Yeah, for sure. Uh, even more advanced questions. I write React. Yeah, all day. 
So, um, the reason why we're getting that undefined error is that I was not passing in display object here. Sure. So if I remove that, now both of these messages are defined. But let's say we also wanted to see the color, right? So we want this text to be colored a certain way. Sure. What we could do is we could do style, and style comes as a uh, an object in React, which is a little bit different from HTML, which is a string. And that's, again, just because the uh, DOM element property rather than the attribute differences. So what we could do is we could do display.color, and we could default this using an or statement to say red. So now, if I wanted other message to be color ah, blue, I'm going to make that a bit bigger here so that we can actually see more of the code. Go away. Uh, if we see display object, we're passing in color blue, we're passing in a message. So now we can see other message is blue, this is a test is red. But that's not necessarily how I do that, because React allows us to have multiple different properties passed in. So what I would do instead is I would do message, and I would do color. We can define red here. So now I can remove that. I can remove that, and we can refactor this a little bit to be message ah all right message this complete that and then color equals blue delete that we should see the code should be the same so we have this ability to pass in items uh, we can even pass in functions so let's do a pass in of fn, and then whenever it clicks, we're going to run fn. So to me, passing whenever, in a function seems kind of scary. Is that is that recommended practice when it comes to React, or is uh, it, it is? All right. So so if you're familiar with something like Angular or Vue, you may have gotten used to what's uh, kind of a, a bidirectional data flow where you emit a value and then you catch that value in the parent and do an action based on yeah. that. Um, but even within like large scale Angular applications, you typically want to have a unidirectional data flow, which means you're passing items in more than you're passing items out. And with React, you don't have the ability to really emit a value back out. You can with some very technical oddities, but you shouldn't. Yeah. Um, and it's much more common practice to pass in a function, especially because React has much more of a functional paradigm. Yeah. Um, Angular tends to prefer and lean towards either an event-based paradigm with RxJS or a, an object-based paradigm um, with classes and extensions and decorators. Um, but with React, it's, it's very solidly, we're going to use functional programming. We're going to stick to using functions. So whenever a user clicks on this display message, we're passing in fn which is then being passed as the value of that function to the on click. So now whenever I click it, I should get an alert that says you clicked. Sweet. Love it. Yeah. So now we're able to kind of pass data up, even though we're passing data in to make changes. Um, we can also do state changes. So in React, we have the ability to do uh, use state, which is a what's called a React hook. Yeah. And this is the recommended approach now, right? Um, yeah, I, there want a lot of core team members seem to prefer hooks. Yeah. There was an older way to write components that's called, uh, classes. So you'd use classes very similarly to Angular or Vue. Oh, well, not Vue, because I, I realize that Vue uses functions as well. Um, but in Angular, you usually use classes to find your components and you can still do that with React, but a lot of people tend to prefer hooks. Got it. Um, although I would still recommend at some point learning classes as well because there's it, it can be helpful for deeper understanding. Is it um, is it an easier entry into React if you're coming from a different language to do one or the other? I mean, you, you've been doing JavaScript a long time and you don't remember much Python anymore, but um, what would you say? I remember a fair amount of All Python. All right. <laughs> um, it, 
So I remember the concepts of Python. Yeah. Um, I just don't remember the syntax. Got it. Of Python, oh, got it. Which honestly, it, it's kind of hit or sure. miss. Um, I, I don't care too much whether I memorize the syntax because I can remember it again with a few seconds of Googling. Yeah. Um, I find React to be the hardest to learn of the three. Personally. Three being Angular and, biggest, and Vue as well? Angular Got and it. Vue, yeah. The biggest reason, though, why I find it the hardest to learn is that if you read through their documentation, I'll give you a great example. Um, let's say that I was just learning how uh, how to do JavaScript. What is clear interval? What is set interval? Um, and, and it's like arrow functions are a bit complicated. Yeah. Maps are a bit complex. Um, and that's not to say that this isn't very powerful, that it's very useful, but it, it, if you read through, they have an implicit knowledge that they require for going through these docs that you understand JavaScript. Yeah. And there's nothing inherently wrong to that, but it, it's almost offsetting to newcomers to the field. Meanwhile, if you look at like the view docs, um, I mean, huge kudos to every single one of the, the core members who works on Can you docs. zoom in a bit? They are, yeah. They are by huge margins the best talk. They have videos for free that are on their core website. Um, it immediately starts you off with some very basic items. There's no super complex JavaScript here to be seen. Yeah. Um, and and even when they do use JavaScript, they tend yeah. to link to MDM docs. I mean, there's so, so much documentation with Vue. Um, and even with more introductory Angular that I think has its advantage for learning one sure. of those over react well, we won't cover. we won't get into the framework wars in this particular stream let's keep yes, it strictly yes. react I, again i'm not even i'm not intending to say anything bad about react by any means it's just personal preference so where was i uh state so let's say that we want to have a uh counter on on screen every time we click this item it adds one uh, instead of an alert and it will show the number on screen that we're using so we're using something called array destructuring yeah. um, just to showcase array destructuring a little bit. Let's say that I had an array of one and two. If I did const item and other equals, then item would become one and other would become two. So it, no magic here. It's just taking two items from an array and assigning them to variables um, instead of uh, const var1 equals 1, 2, and the item equals var1, 0. Like, it's kind of verbose, so it's just a shorthand. So what we can do is we can start with a initial state of 0, as we're seeing here, and we can call it number and set number. And then I'm going to update this function that we pass in. So instead of alert, it is set number. And it's going to be number plus one. And finally, inside of this a tag, I'm going to leverage that for my disposal. Now, when I click on this as a test, yep. it adds one to the state every time. And that's it. So you can use that value, even pass that value in as a property to message. So here, it's now passed in as a property. Um, state could be a function. It could be really anything to uh, see there. <laughs> yes, you think if you uh, okay. I'm not gonna <laughs> dive into that, but I just saw your comments. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I didn't realize you were looking at the comments too. Yeah, we're we're getting we're getting engaged, man. Where this is a live episode. <laughs> well, I think you're get me. Yep. So, uh, let's see here. What do we want to dive into next? So, uh. We have a fairly basic introductory here, but we're missing something, right? Yeah. Something kind of obvious, something that a lot of websites use a lot of, links. How do we have different pages? How do we have, like, it's great to have content on screen. We could, yep. we could add a header up here. We could have a, a body. We could have all sorts of fancy stuff. But how do we navigate, right? Like, that's integral to any application. Um, and if, if Some, you've ever built... Right. <laughs> right. If you've ever built um, an HTML website, just yeah. plain HTML and JavaScript, you know that you have to create a new HTML file, you have to create a new JavaScript file, new CSS file, you have to organize things in a weird way, um, and then you'd have to configure your server to hide the .html, right? Um, 
not the case with React. Um, or if you use Vue or Angular, same. Uh, you usually utilize something that's like this, uh, which allows us to have all of our route logic, um, which includes URL changing and pages and stuff like that, uh, contained within the single page of React. So what this is called is it's called an SPA, single page application. So all we do is we install that package. Uh, we install React Router DOM. So let's stop our server. Let's run an NPM install. And uh, what was the tool again? It was React Router DOM. All right, let me add it to the chat. Yep. Yeah. And this is, there are other options. Um, there is uh, Reach Router, which is actually being merged in with React Router. Yep. Um, but because this, because React core team has done a really good job at staying somewhat agnostic, um, they enable the community to pick up a lot of the pieces that Angular or Vue might either have built in or built by the core team. Yeah. So in this case, uh, React Router is handled by community. Uh, the community is super strong. Uh, huge, huge, huge applications use React Router. So there's no real concern regarding stability or anything like that. Sure. While this is uh, installing, I want to just shed some light on on this stream setup that we we've got going on. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this uh, this is the second stream for this particular channel. Still trying to get uh, comfortable with all of the settings. With I'm using OBS, so Open Broadcast Studio. We're trying out a, a plugin today with Skype, so that's how I'm able to get Corbin on the line. If the quality of his video or audio or anything is wrong it should improve in, in later streams when we when we look back at this and try to figure things out um, i am hoping that our audio is not out of sync in the sense that uh, it sounds like i'm talking over corbin or corbin's over talking over me because when when i'm listening to corbin that's not the case um, but you never know i don't know how it's coming in for for obs um, but work in progress uh, in case you're curious though this yeah. is uh the skype ndi uh, feature. So there's an NDI feature of OBS uh, where you can actually consume each video, whether that be the screen share or the camera, as kind of a separate IP camera that I can add in to the OBS scene in case you're curious about streaming yourself. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. It's interesting. Uh, or... Yeah. So uh, we have it installed. So what we can do is we can take a look at this code. Um, I'm just going to do a quick run through what this code Yeah, does can you zoom then, in about uh, a couple we'll times? Add it into our application. We have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry, I, inter I, I interrupted you that time. You know those time. memes that are like. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, it, it's like that meme whenever you're on a conference call. It's uh, um, can someone mute their mic yeah. or whatever. In this case, it's can you zoom yeah. in. <laughs> so in this case, we have a, a base router. This router will allow us to do things like have different uh, components rendered on screen for uh, different routes. We have link, which is kind of like an A tag with an href, but in this case, it's the link component with the two uh, property. We also have switch, which allows us to conditionally render. So if you're on the about page, it will only render this. If you're on the user's page, it will only render this. If you're on the home page, it will only render this. And then we have these components that are down here that just display the different text. So let's copy some of that. I'm actually going to move this off to screen two. And we can, I don't know why I tried to import there. But we will add in the router at the base. I'm getting a suggestion in the we chat will... to look into uh, Zoom for OBS. I didn't realize there was an extension for it. Ah, yeah. I didn't realize there was either. Okay. Give it a try. All right, keep going, man. Yeah. You're on a roll. So, yeah. We can now put in a switch. And let's say that we want to have test route and we want to have blue route. In blue route, we will have the display message with the color blue and the number. Notice that we're still using the state from the parent and able to pass that down. And then under test, we will have the ability to uh, add one. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but we'll have the ability to add one. And then for each of these, we will have a few different links. 
So we'll have uh, nav with all this list. We'll have this above the logo, and we'll have test. We'll have blue. And we'll have route. We'll call that home. All right. So now, if we run this again, npm run test, or start. Too many commands. All right. Now, if we allow the page to refresh after it builds, we'll have blue, which will show the blue text. We'll have test, which will allow us to add one. That purple's like impossible so for me to see. It's super hard to yeah. see. So you know what? Let's change that. Let's go into our app. Like I know it's bright in my room. I know I've got tons of glare, but it is like invisible to me. <laughs> I know it's there though. Yeah. No, it, it's the same for me. So let's change that. Let's do a semicolon visited. Um, Make it like yellow or we'll something. I don't, something bright. Yeah. Yellow on a dark background go. should look good. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> So now we have our blue text. We have home, which we didn't configure a route for. Um, so nothing shows up because none of these are being matched. Uh, and then test, which allows us to add one to the state. Notice that whenever I switch to blue, yeah. uh, it still contains the state, though, because the state is contained with an app. If we move this uh, number inside of uh, display message and we rendered it there, yeah. let's do that. We'll add show number we'll do that and we'll call this new number just to not be confusing and what we'll do is because inside of these braces we can do a conditional uh, we can do like kind of arbitrary JavaScript we can do if show number then we want to show new number Otherwise, we want to show message and on click if show number, we want to set new number v plus one. Otherwise, we'll take in the past in and then for blue. We will set show number to be true. All right. So now whenever we go to blue, we should be able to add one by clicking multiple times. Yeah. But notice that when we leave and come back, why is blue still showing the number? Oh, whenever we leave and come back, blue goes back to zero. Yeah. Um, and that's because it's unrendering, so it, it's removing itself from screen. And then whenever you remove yourself from screen, uh, it will add back. But you could so, always uh, create like a, a cookie or a, a, some kind of session to maintain it, right? Right. What you could do is you could do a use effect, yeah. which is basically code that says run every time X changes. Ah. So we could do new number. And we could say local storage dot set item. So we could do num new number. So this will run every time new number is updated. Um, and then we can do a use effect, which is updated when nothing happens, which is why we have an empty array. And we will do local storage dot get item num. Const uh, local num, and then if local num, then we can, because it's going to store it as a string because of local storage. Man, your bot is really aggressive. I know my bot. I I, I got to fix it. I this is a good test. It tells me that it's too aggressive. <laughs> uh, we will do set new number. Oh man, yeah. We'll do local num dot to, how do I make it a number? That's right. I pass it to the constructor of number. All right. So now if we set the value to three, we could actually do local storage dot get item 
num here, we can see that it's seven. So now if I go back and to blue, whoa. Oh, it's because it, here, we'll set if new number. Because what's happening is that it's defaulting to zero every time. So this is running and then it's trying to load. So that's a bug, we fixed that now. So now if we add, 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 we go to home, we go back to blue, we'll, you'll notice that eight is still present. I uh, really like the Airbnb JS style guide, the Airbnb programming st lab stuff. Airbnb is using React and not switching. Be interesting to know the reason. Um, yeah, uh, as Nick mentions, uh, Vue does not have a huge backer. Um, I'm not necessarily certain that that's a reason not to adopt Vue. Yeah. Um, I know that Vue is used very heavily, especially in China, for very, very, very large scale applications. So it's not necessarily that Vue isn't stable or that it has support, um, especially because the community support is yeah. so big. Um, but I would argue that switching stacks just for the sake of switching stacks isn't ideal. And Vue.js and React are different. They're not inherently better or inherently worse. They are different. Um, despite their similarities, they do have advantages, they do have disadvantages, and even though I have a preference in this war, which I won't mention, um, both React and Vue do have very distinct usages, and it's not easy to migrate from one to another. Um, so it, it's a matter of justifying the cost, right? Yeah. If you've already spent $2 million, which is not a very large sum of money for a large-scale application. If you've already spent $2 million writing um, a medium to large-scale application in React, what would be the cost and, and what would be the benefit for migrating away from React? Um, and it's not as if React doesn't have large support, so um, I'm not necessarily sure that Airbnb should or would switch to another framework. Um, but that's not to say that's not a good question. Um, I yeah. think that's like a question that comes up with even internally within companies comes up. So it's, it's a great question. Um, currently you wanting to use react more because animation tool Lottie. Yeah. Lottie is massive. If you've ever had to do anything with animation, Lottie is super kick butt. Um, so yeah. All right. So back to what we were talking about. I know that, uh, I've tangented on that, but I did want to address the, the comments there so because they were great questions. Um, so now that we have some routes, let's make this look a bit more like an app, shall we? Um, right now it's looking rather demo-y, which isn't inherently bad, but uh, we want an app, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize a, an existing uh, library that lets us have all sorts of super cool applications. Can you zoom in? Um, not, yep. I need to really like have a browser that just has that default set. I need to make would help. play like a startling sound that just kind of shocks you every time. Like uh, <laughs> like what every time it's someone follows the, the channel, I don't know if you hear the sound, but it makes a sound like something from uh, it reminds me kind of like Metal Gear Solid. Uh, and I get startled because I don't know what, what's going on. Um, That's fun. So I don't know. That's super fun. Uh, so let's look at the components. Uh, actually... Do they they have, do do have templates? Let's take a look at their templates really quickly. So we have a dashboard. Let's look at that really quick. So this is an example app from the Material UI library, and it's good. Like this is, I can tell you from experience, this is maybe a couple hundred lines to code at most, um, just to display this UI, and it's it's very very pretty. So do they have multiple um, platform examples? Because I could have sworn Material UI was Angular. Is that not true? Uh, so there is the, um, they've renamed Angular Material to uh, Angular Components. Ah, all right. But they, uh, that's See, I'm out of date. I'm, I'm getting old over no. right here. I'm like a dinosaur. Not at all. Not at all. I, and I think they renamed it to Angular Components like really recently, but it's still called Material.Angular for their links, which is interesting. Such a good live stream. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Very cool. It's all good. We appreciate that you're here. Yes, yes. And I'm sure someone will see it on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is the second networks. stream. We haven't uh, yeah. we haven't promoted it too much. It's more uh, more of a soft launch until we get all yeah, of the, the bells and whistles working. 
Yeah. And plus, Nick and I are friends. We are having a good time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're you're exactly right. Right. So Angular is made by the Google team. Um, yeah. And the Angular Material library is made by that same core team, and it's kind of like the de facto UI if you plan to make an Angular application. It doesn't have to be. You can use other UIs, but uh, it's very useful. Um, but there is a version of that same design language because Material UI uh, Material is a design language by Google, but it's implemented elsewhere. So there's uh, View Beautify. Yeah, there's Beautify for View, which is the same uh, like general look and feel, but obviously different code in the background. Um, then there's Angular Material, and then there's Material UI, and there's there's all sorts of other alternatives. React has other options. Uh, View has other options, but these are kind of like the really popular ones for each of the frameworks. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to install the core. And I'm also going to install the icons once that's done. Um, but in the meanwhile, we can actually look at uh, the code here. So we can do title. Let's uh, maybe start from the beginning and zoom in just a bit, just so that way um, yep. we know what you're clicking on. There we go. So let's see here. We have dashboard.js. That seems like a good place to start. That's too far in. I know I'm probably being too strict on you on all this zooming stuff. No, but, uh, no, no, no. I really appreciate it because I'm the type of person where I'm just going to space on it, <laughs> even though you've sold me 30 times. <laughs> That, that was the biggest feedback I got starting out in doing videos is um, my my font was way too small. Nobody told me about it until I was like so many videos in. And now... And you're like, no. I get so many complaints now on all my old videos that the the font was so small. Uh, but not letting so that happen something anymore. I wanna... Sorry, go ahead. Go on. It's all you, man. Okay. Sorry about that. So one of the things that I want to bring up is notice how they're doing styling here. Um, this isn't CSS, or at least it's not strict CSS. It's not a string. It's it's more like an object. Um, Material UI uses a library called uh, styled components in order to display things. And styled components is what's known as CSS in JS. So it's CSS in your JavaScript. So you write it as JavaScript, which is why you can have uh, objects like theme, uh, theme.transitions. Um, but you can also use like uh, expansions, uh, basically any JavaScript feature, which is great. We're not going to do that. Um, we're just going right. to use the default uh, app toolbar, app bar, all that good stuff. OK, so that ran. We're going to install the icons now. So let's see here. We have components what do we have do they have the app i'm trying to remember if this is if it's not okay so we will steal code from their dashboard mahaha super evil so in their app bar we want to take i have a freaking uh noise canceling headset on and i can still hear the jet engine that is my computer for this stream <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's. I'm only laughing because I too know the pain. I just don't understand it. I'm at 20% CPU, and it sounds like uh, there's a hurricane in in this room. Through my through my headset, I thought it, maybe it was you, but I just took it off, and it's definitely me. <laughs> I I'm laughing as hard as I am because I also have a jet engine right now. <laughs> that's very. Um, <laughs> that's great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna steal all of these imports probably don't need them all so let's see which ones we don't need okay so we are not using any of those all the things with the yellow underlines we're not using thank you vs code for telling me that all right let's look at code which which code is invalid we don't need a class name there we don't need a class name there we're just going to use all the defaults we don't need either of that we'll add these later if we need them i'm sure it's not going to look super pretty without all right cool so npm run start again 
some additional things to the UI. Auto font. Let's see. Every now and then the installation is not kind. Ah, that's not too bad. So we have a little app bar up here. Not too bad for the amount of effort that you put here. into it. Not not bad at all. Yeah, given that I got given that I just copied and pasted some random things. Not bad. Okay. So in our dashboard under app toolbar, we have a drawer. That drawer is open permanently, which is why it says variant permanent. We're going to make open true. Again, we're going to remove some of this uh, logic. We will add it back eventually. I'm also going to change that list to, uh, where is it, main list items. Okay, so list items are stored under forward slash list items. We're going to see what this looks like really quickly. I'm yeah. actually quite impressed that we've only had one error so far in your in your uh, live stream, and that was with the CSS file. Yeah, so that's I, impressive. I've gotten really lucky, so I'm like playing with the uh, fire here. The demo gods are on your side today. Oh, thank goodness. They rarely are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's steal some other icons. By now, I'd be uh, I'd be 20 errors in and ready to flip some some tables. <laughs> It's okay. I'm not far away. Um, do they have a two? Okay, so so one of the things that I want to bring up is kind of how to access and read some of the API documentation. So, for yeah. example, uh, they have a list item, right? But I know that that material, I just based on experience, I know that they have the ability to uh, have a two link in some of these, and yeah. I want to see if they do on this. They don't. Button bool false true. Props then for button based can be applied. Okay, so this extends button based when I pass it in. So does button based have a two property? Hmm. Does not. I've never used this uh, this library, so unfortunately I cannot provide much assistance. <laughs> no worries. Uh, all right, maybe not. I'm still a uh, a Bootstrap user, so uh, I'm pretty. Oh, no, pretty out no. of it <laughs> that's all right so here i will wrap i will wrap each of these last items into a link i will remove button because it's no longer a button if it's a link no i wanted to end the link thank you we will do test blue now I can get rid of this nav. Uh, link closing list. Where are you? Oh, I didn't even add the list. Ah, okay. Sweet. Link is not defined. That's all right. So now we can go in and import this. Again, I'm just importing mass everything and then removing what I'm not currently using. Sure. Uh, our chevron left icon is not defined. All right. And then divider was also not defined. Drawer or divider. There's divider. Where's drawer? Drawer, drawer, drawer. There it is. Awesome. So now I can start getting rid of that and that. Looks like it's it. So let's see what it reloaded to. List is not defined. Well, let's go to find list. Hey, thanks. Thanks for the follow, Neko Overflow. Hey, nice. So I have uh, notice how these are all imports. Seems like a lot, right? Now realize that you'd have to write every single one of those components yourself. <laughs> so sure, imports aren't fun. It's even more not more not fun, in my opinion, to uh, have to write all of them. So I've set open to true by default. But what we can do is we can actually make this use state a boolean. We'll set true here. Set is open. And then set is open. So 
So now we're doing that. And then where is that menu icon? Right here. So now I'm going to do on click. Is open, not is open. So now, numbers, not, oh, it's because I'm trying to utilize number down here. We're going to remove that for now. So now, oh, go figure. I've forgotten to add the on click to the chevron as well. There we go. So now, I can. Why are you not going away? You should be going away now. <laughs> and nothing's popping so you up in your console it. either. You said, uh, you said demo gods were on my side. That's when they I know. I, ch I jinxed it, I ruined it. Jeez, thanks a lot, man. Now, going forward, everything's going to be disastrous, and then we're going to have to switch to the. <laughs> what is it the apocalypse kind of screen where it's just a a circle into yep. the world kind of thing broadcast can't be reached thanks a lot all right classes.content let's see i should actually get that screen inside of my obs for emergencies like this right no 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 sure we'll figure it out that's the minute flex grow I, all these need to be parentheses. Just fixing up some of the styling here since it's looking a bit wonky. Div class name. Stealing code is all fun and good until it doesn't work. <laughs> it's probably that's something nice. silly. It's, huh? probably something, it's probably something silly that's going wrong. Oh, I'm sure it is. Let's see. Content, flex grow, one height. Oh, it's because I have quotes in there. Really? Uh, that was it? <laughs> no, no, that's not it, but there, it, it is a contributing factor. Why is this happening? All right. We're going to get real now. So when I try to do CSS, it looks like I make something out of like 1999. <laughs> I I've gotten very good with CSS, um, but it, it comes with uh, a burden of having to know CSS. I'm just kidding. I I, re I legitimately do like CSS. Um, I know a lot of people don't, yeah. and that's on them. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a I'm a big fan of CSS. So I think what's happening is that some of these components expect to be wrapped in certain ways, and we're not yeah. wrapping them currently in that way. Oh, with like a parent div tag. Yeah, well, so I'll give you a great example is uh, like right here, right in their yeah. base, they have a root div that has flex, right? Yep. And then what they're doing is they're doing flex grow one ah, to make sure it. that their uh, parent or their child is not too small. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start copying some of their CSS as well. Um, and then hopefully that should make some of the problems go away. Classes app bar. Uh, you don't need to copy that app bar shift. Ah, so it's conditionally applying app bar shift depending on if it's open or not. Hmm, that's interesting. How is it defining app bar width? Okay, so 240. That's fine. So we will do dot app bar shift. So notice that they have this weird interpolation. We'll just pass in 240 since we're using normal CSS and not JavaScript and CSS. I didn't even know that that was a, a an acceptable <laughs> command that you could do right there. Which one? Calc uh, and then 100% minus uh, a pixel value. That, sure that would have changed my life on so many levels if I knew that was possible. Yeah, you can even do stuff like um, calc 100 minus REM, which yeah. is like useful for text. So you can do all sorts of good stuff. Okay. I learned a lot from you, and it's not even uh, it's not even React that I'm learning from you. I'm just learning that's all your okay, tooling though. and your your CSS. Yeah, that's okay.
uh, let's see here. Where's app bar shift applied? It's applied to app bar. So we'll do class list or class name. And we will do open and and app bar shift. Otherwise, we don't want any class. Oh, there we go. It's called is open. So like I said, we're just going to keep going incrementally, see what yeah. starts fixing things. The uh, the Chrome uh, the Chrome extension that you were using that we first uh, set up that what was that uh, just uh, React tools, right? Yep, yep, React Dev tools. Yeah, we have it. We have a question there. What's uh, if there's a Chrome debugger extension? Yeah, um, there is. Yeah, super powerful. Uh... Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, margin left is 240. And I'm actually going to add important to these. Tisk, tisk, I know it shouldn't, but it's going to make our debugging a little bit easier. So that helps a little bit. That seems like it's kind of sort of having some behavior. OK, so that's app bar. What about drawer? What classes does drawer have? No. Drawer. OK. Roar paper. Okay, so it has some behaviors. Dot drawer paper. When you go back into your GitHub uh, screen, if you can zoom in one more time, it's like at that borderline of visible to not visible. There you go. There we go. Okay, so that's going to be 240px. Again, this is just because I've started copying and pasting in a weird way. I should yeah. have honestly just gone through and used the components individually, but that's okay. it's all we'll good. Take, you know. The troubleshooting definitely helps, I think, especially yeah. um, if you're not familiar with the bits and pieces that are that are going on. Oh, right, I'm not actually playing this class. So, drawer class name equals for paper. Cool. That's looking a lot better. Like a lot, a lot better. Let's see here. Drawer paper and drawer paper closed if it is not currently open. So it's not going to have any of the animations because I'm removing some of the transition stuff. But we will have dot drawer paper closed overflow x hidden we're going to remove that transition we're going to change width to be what is the theme dot spacing uh let's come up with some number what's seven times eight uh is that like 56 good work good, good work. oh man my, wow. my math is so bad i have nightmares sometimes about about, about math and being in school again <laughs> Like it's PTSD. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to do media screen. Um, min width is, let's do like 580px. So that's going to max width. That's going to apply this width property on the smaller screen, so it should be responsive. We're going to do like 72px. And then that should work. Ah, sorry. We have to apply this conditionally. So I am going to, since this is a string interpolation, I'm going to do is open. So it's going to be closed if that is false. And it's always going to have the drawer open. I think I've gotten something inverted. Looks like it. Um, yeah. Is it the um, the Z index by chance? Is there uh, some kind of mess up going on? No, I don't think so. Okay, so what is happening here? Ah, uh, okay. So watch, that's working. Sure. So that's working as expected, but then this property is not following the parent. So what we need to do is we need to have the div. Actually, hang on. 
You got some div nesting in the wrong place. Oh, okay. So it doesn't like my media. Media screen max width. I always forget how to do. Oh, it's only media screen and. I'm forgetting the word and. Oh, all right. Doesn't look like it changed anything. Did you remember to save? Mm. Yes, because I'm seeing it here, but why isn't it liking that media? Is something screen. taking uh, priority over it? Shouldn't be. It's it's not even recognized it, recognizing it as uh, valid CSS, which is quite strange indeed. Uh, yep, calc can be bay, but you can use calc without headaches and CSS property. Yeah, um, calc is very nice for runtime, though. Um, so let's say that you have some conditional logic that you expect to be somewhat different works better than I what am I missing uh, oh 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 I'm not using scss I'm sorry nesting doesn't exist <laughs> um right so it's the other way around okay yeah. I swear I got I'm I'm so used to using things like um frame uh tools like scss that allow you to do nesting um that I, I think you honestly... and it's epic figured that out at the same time <laughs> yep. Good work. All right. So now, is it overflow hidden? Why is it still showing that? Here. Let's. What is happening? <laughs> overflow hidden. Why are you not hiding the thing that's under you? Is the class on the wrong tag? No, I don't think so. Hmm. Are we sure it's overflowing? Yeah, because because the under the, the child the is overflowing. All right. Uh. Yeah. Hundred percent position relative. I'm trying all the usual usual suspects here. Man, that's weird. Let's look at what they did here. So they have the drawer. Uh, hmm. That is interesting. Just switch to SCSS seems so lower, even though the sock is the same. Yeah, nested syntax is very nice. Now, what am I doing wrong? Quite curious indeed. Been trying to get this all. So. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, tricky to do modernization with SCSS. I still really do not know what's happening, or why it's not. Display block. Why is it not recognizing the parent width even? Overflow hidden. Right. We're googling. Rather than doing the multi the the doc, can you just add it to the um, inside of the debug tools the the element style? Uh, I am, yeah. All right. Oh, uh, you're adding it to a specific class name, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Because I don't know, maybe it doesn't make any difference. My CSS skills are so bad that I'm probably making things worse. <laughs> to hide an absolute overflow not. This is so confusing. Okay, what's the fix? Applying CSS overflow hidden to both. Okay, let's give that a shot. Overflow hidden. Overflow hidden. Nope. That defies all of my logic. Okay. Uh, we have a suggestion that maybe your flex property is not on the parent correctly. Okay. Display flex. But what I'm saying is that like it's width is set so therefore it should overflow hide man it's really bad when you're bragging about your css skills and then it's like 
I gotta, <laughs> getting stuck on like a didn't, page didn't you appoint yourself as like the css master just uh just like 15 minutes yeah. ago <laughs> yeah I, I might have to start walking back on that um i really don't know what neko if you know what's going on please help uh you're another <laughs> very good css person we need to phone some friends here uh, yeah wow it's all good i wouldn't stress too much on it i think we kind of get the idea yeah that's okay at any rate we'll continue um and we'll yeah. just assume that this is working as expected we'll do with 240 px we'll, we'll just hard code it in that's fine sure so we will do div yeah we'll hard code it in for now don't know what's going wrong um Flex is hard to debug without live code. I agree. <laughs> so I'm just going to do style, and we're going to do width, 240px, and make that a string. So we're just going to hard code it just to edge case for the stream. I apologize for taking so long on that. Probably all should have just done that earlier. Uh, what oh, we can that also good do, now. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So what we can also do is... Um, do these work? Yes, they do. So you notice that uh, I'm going to actually remove the color yellow on the visited tags. It's making it very hard to read. Yeah. So now you can see that our routes are updating, in fact. Yeah, that's great. And we can make these a little bit more contentful. So let's say that we start a new component that has, no. What component do we want? Let's look through what they have in Material UI. Go oh, away. We have floating action buttons. That's pretty cool probably have to position that manually let's see here let's do some cards yeah let's do that we'll have, right. we'll have a small dictionary page. so we'll do source folder dictionary i've probably misspelled that ironically dick shun harry dot js i'm going to copy that so that i don't keep misspelling it <laughs> my spelling is so my, my dad used to tell me growing up that, like, Corbin, you're going to not know how to spell things because computers will correct it for you, and he was correct. <laughs> oh, it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. So let's import a card. Let's import all of that. We'll remove the classes, and we'll hope that that goes well. So, I mean, for anyone who's uh, catching up to this part of the stream, whether or not that's live or on demand, we've essentially gone from starting a new project with Create React App to creating components to using routes and now implementing this uh, kind of UI framework on top of it, right? Yeah. So we've uh, we've really started from the bottom in this particular and, stream. And that even does conclude me getting stuck on uh, my fair share of uh, weird oddities. Yeah. We'll call instead of blue, we'll do dictionary. This blue wasn't doing much for us, anyways. Never does. It's a terrible color. <laughs> Let's see here. You're moving at like a million oh. miles a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get through all the really boring um, like it's all good plates. it's all good all hey. right that's not bad not bad that's at not all bad for a few seconds of work um hi mr <laughs> million miles a second uh, <laughs> all right well, welcome to the stream uh yeah <laughs> that's just how we do it here so we'll do uh with let's do 20 percent so that we can fit a few of them on screen next to each other cool so now we could have uh, the dictionary page with like multiple of these. We 
can even do a div style. I'm just going to do inline styles just for the sake of it because it's faster. And then we'll do justify content equals space around. See, I swear I know my CSS. I told you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have to believe me. Please believe me. Hey, there we go. That's not looking half bad. Not uh, too so bad. That's our dictionary page. Um, let's get rid of this logo. Uh, and let's replace it with, like, a simple message. Welcome to my site. Not bad. Ah, let's add a uh, margin header to this. this. Height is 64. On content under app.css, we will add that margin top. Um, keep in mind that I'm doing a lot of CSS edge casing right now. Um, in a large scale application, usually what would happen is you would work around these. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily have so much CSS here, and it would be a lot more responsive. But yeah, so we have uh, our dictionary page. Let's see what other components they have. Uh, they have hmm, a stepper. I like steppers. They're very cool. Like, it's so cool to just be able to have this with such little. So there, there's an actual name for that. Then I didn't even think there was a, a name mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, um, it's, it's really impressive. Not just the the component authors, so the people who make the code. Yeah. Um, but the people who make the designs for these components, yeah. they, they, they work very tirelessly. They, they do all sorts of stuff. So is this no longer called a wizard? Because I could have sworn like 10 years ago or maybe maybe longer, it used to be called a wizard with the step-by-step -step kind of thing. No? Bootstrap may call it a wizard. I know that Material does call it a stepper. All right. I don't think Bootstrap has it. It might. Just in general, I yeah. thought it was a wizard. Oh, let's take a look at their code. Got first. some links trying to come in. Sorry, my bot is aggressive on the links. Um, I apologize. If you add some spaces, it might be able to. Might be able to pick it up. Period. What advice would you? <clears throat> would you give the advice to always use this project structure? Currently, I still like to automate my workflow with Gulp. Um. Give you a great example of some project structure. I am working on an app on my side project. Let's see if I can find so, it here. So just for clarity, and you don't have to give company names or anything. You do this stuff full time, right, Corbin? React. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I do this full time, um, and I I do all sorts of stuff on the site as well. This, um, yeah. And I'm not going to show any of my full time code. That would be no. very bad. <laughs> I no, definitely not. A lot of trouble. <laughs> but I'll show one of my side projects. So this side project uses um, TypeScript. It uses um, all sorts of stuff. It uses Firebase for hosting um, and for its database. And if you look, we have components, we have routes, we have core. It's got a lot of stuff. So let me walk through very, very broadly what I've done for this structure. And I will also explain how other applications can use different structures, why you might want to use other things, um, and just kind of give like a really high level overview of uh, what we have here. So if we look under our app TSX, I'm still using um, uh, React Router DOM for this project. We have all sorts of like Theme providers, auth context providers. If you use context, you may be familiar. If not, the gist of it is I have this global store all the way at the very top, this app.tsx, that provides values all the way down through the bottom of the application. So even if you're 10, 20 layers deep in your component, you can still access like user data um, or the current project that you have selected or, or whatnot. Um, and then I have App Shell, which is a component so if I look under components, I should see app shell. And it contains all the, the styling. So it has my sidebar. It has uh, my header, all that stuff. And then I can pass in children, which is what we would call, um, well, the children. So here I have my switch. So my router is in app. 
But notice that my views, so any of my pages that I access, um, in this case, we have a project page, an icons page, and the home page, which is just like listing all the projects. Those views are inside of routes. So notice that there's only three of them. All of the logic that I use to, like app shell as a component, I don't use that as a view. Um, anything inside of login, um, well, login is a bit weird because I'm using some external services, but like icons page, I'm using uh, peer. So I have a non-peer and I have a peer version of each route. The peer version is just the JSX. There's no logic in here. There's no calls to my server. There's no calls to a database. It's just plain and simply the, the UI. Um, this UI oftentimes will make calls to individual components. So each one of these folders is a component that contains um, what's called a story, which lets me preview a UI element without actually opening it, uh, opening it up in my full project with a database and everything. That's called Storybooks. It's a library. But it also has all my CSS, everything. So my components contain everything that doesn't have any logic in it. It's just meant for UI purposes. Routes contains the the pages that I have. I call them routes just because I prefer it. Um, and then I have a pure, which contains just my UI for those routes. And I have the non-pure, which contains my database calls, my use effects, um, anything that I would need in terms of business logic. So it's a very, very, very structured Here's where I go to look for this. Here's where I go to look for this. This folder should have no use effects. It should have no logic in it. Um, and then this should be where my logic lies. So it's very, very structured. I have TypeScript types um, here. I have services, which is like all my calls to the server here. Um, so I have very, very, very structured organization. Here's the thing. The company that I work for is a Fortune 500, and we don't use anything close to that structure. Not even close, not because it's better, not because it's worse, just because it, it's not what our team decided on. And that's kind of both the blessing and the curse with React is that there's like 30 or 40 different ways to structure your projects. And then it's up to you to pick one. <laughs> um, I'll give you the same advice I give with picking a framework, picking a programming language, picking anything, just pick it. You're going to have advantages and disadvantages regardless of what you choose. And so long as you learn and you understand whichever one you pick, it's going to help you in the long run. Um, this is a, a, a layout that I had never used before this project. Um, I like the layout, but I also like other layouts. So sometimes you'll have routes separated from components. Sometimes you'll have them in the same folder. Um, there's all sorts of different ways to lay out uh, projects, and it depends on what your requirements are. If you have a hundred routes, maybe this might not be the best for you. Maybe you want to um, organize your, your structure based on features. So instead of having each route separately individually, you'll have uh, feature A and feature A will have both components and the route data. Um, maybe you'll have uh, an instance where you only want to have components because everything is on one page. You know, there's there's a bunch of different ways that you can structure things. And the tools that you use, for example, Gulp might be a great example if you're doing some really uh, highly customizable workflows. You you want to copy to a server, and then you want your server to run a special build config, and then it, it, it all depends. Um, and that, that's kind of like a very frustrating, frustrating engineering. Uh, it depends, but it, it is the most honest answer I can give you, is that you don't have to structure your projects like mine but you do, or at least you should understand what you're dealing with in terms of limitations. Um, great question though. So what's left Corbin before we start getting into territory that maybe we want to save for a future stream? Yeah. Um, it depends. Uh, I'll, I'll take anything from, uh, the, the peanut gallery. <laughs> um, if, if anyone has any questions in particular, um, I know that things didn't go perfectly with the UI. Um, although that's a, that's a, that's as good as I can hope a live code to go, to be honest. Yeah. It's all usually, they, usually they're much worse. <laughs> we got, we got what we needed out of it. Yeah. Um, but just understand that, that sometimes the structure of a app is very, very simple to lay out. 
Yes. Um, one last thing. I'll actually touch on it a bit more. Um, I don't know if I'll integrate it because it's kind of a pain in the butt to configure. Yeah. Um, but Storybooks, it's yeah. a way that you can um, build UI components without adding in any data, really. Um, so it looks just like this. So you would have a normalized component. You can pass in and customize it. Um, this is a really great, great way of having what's called like a separation of uh, your UI and your logic. If you're building your UI with only the UI in mind and you don't want to like intermingle your, your database code and all this other stuff, uh, storybooks can be of huge use. I only want to shout it out because I mentioned it already. So. Sounds good. If uh, people beyond this stream want to get in touch with you, I've already listed your website, mm -hmm. Unicorn Utterances, many times. What else can uh, people do to, to get engaged with you? Um, I'm also on Twitter. Uh, you can give me a shout out. Um, I'm at Crutchcorn. Um, you want to type that in the chat? DMs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's get that in the chat so people can uh, get engaged. I mean, we're we're I think we're all gonna wait for you to to publish a, an official course on on what you just went over. I think. Yeah. Oh, sure. my bad. All right. <laughs> of course, that's a thing, right? All right. Oh, that's very funny. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even I don't even know how to give you moderator permission from the chat, so I'm just gonna I guess I'll type it in. What is it? Twitter.com slash crutchcorn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Great. I'll fix all of this. The bots hey, the bots too good. Soft launch, right? Yep, soft launch. What else uh, anything else you want people to to know? Um I mean just just know that if you do have any questions, um I uh, oh, one more place that I, I'm very, very able to communicate through. If you go to our website and yeah. you go to the About Us page. And actually, I'll send this link to you, Nick. Um, if you look, at, click this logo, which is for Discord, yeah. um, the Unicorn Utterances has a community. We have an online chat that you can ask any questions. Every now and then I'll do a video call with someone to help them with a problem. Um, so I, I try to answer as many questions there as possible, ranging from what is HTML all the way up to how do I do advanced React architecture? Um, so please yeah, feel free to reach a, out to me there. So, it's yeah. a busy chat channel. I, I drop yeah. in every, every once in a while, and there's always stuff going on. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's a good time. Uh, like, just want to reiterate um, what as we close this screen, uh, stream up. Uh, we are. This is a soft launch. This is the second video. The first video was just me. This is the first attempt at having guests. So Corbin being the guest on this stream. Uh, there, there's typically going to be problems associated with that. Maybe audio, video quality, or delays. Uh, but we'll get CSS. through it. Yeah, CSS. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're it, it's a work in progress. Uh, streaming. Uh, I don't know if anyone's streamed themselves. It's not as easy as you would think to do a technical stream. Maybe it's probably a lot easier to do a video game stream, but live technical, th there's a lot going on. Yeah, for sure. Anything else you want to close on before we uh, bring it to a close? No, I think that's it. All right. Then, uh, Corbin, I appreciate you giving us this wonderful hour and 45-minute stream. Um, it yeah. was great. It's a great introduction. Yeah. Glad to be able to give it. Um, always eager for more opportunity to help people. So. Yeah, definitely.